Next question is from Zelen Castiot. How much and when should you drink creatine in order to use it to its maximum potential? I love the creatine questions because mm -hmm. uh, it's proven to be, um, aside from supplements that will meet some kind of nutrient deficiency, besides that, there is no supplement that comes close to, uh, in terms of proven benefits yeah. uh, to creatine. It's, uh, it's the most studied ergogenic supplement. There's got to be, I don't know, thousands of well-done studies on it. It used to be thought that creatine just improves strength and muscle growth, but now we know it improves cognitive performance. It's got antioxidant properties. It helps with heart health. Um, it may help with uh, with testosterone production. It may help with uh, bone density. So it's this, this incredible supplement yeah. that I think a lot of people could benefit from. I remember our coaches were super worried about it. Like it was some kind of like anabolic steroid that uh, we had to be, uh, you know, uh, we had to be concerned with. And we had people come in and talk to us about it and like finding out who's using it because it was effective. It was one of those supplements that actually had, uh, you know, like you actually had something, um, you know, positive as, as a result, especially strength wise that we noticed, you know, from taking it. But yeah, it's, it's the most studied. It's the most uh, recognized in terms of like its its benefits and i think the exciting part is the cognitive stuff and the wellness aspects of it uh, that we're just recently finding out that's what i'm i'm most interested in that do you do you think that we're going to see that do you think you know your health and wellness people are going to be promoting creatine it's already happening are you seeing yeah that? so i people that i know in the wellness space that are <clears throat> in the up and up right who who tend to be the first ones to put things they'll sell supplements that are for health and you'll see now there'll be like a few ingredients and one of them will be creatine monohydrate. Mm. And these are wellness supplements. So they're not even selling them to people who are trying to get bigger and stronger. They're selling them to people who want to improve their overall health. Because remember, creatine, it, it increases ATP. Okay, So an ATP is produced by the mitochondria of your cells. All the mitochondria of your cells, those are the cells powerhouse. So creatine literally on a cellular level because you've heard in the wellness space a lot that the that it's so important to improve mitochondrial health, right? Mm -hmm. If your mitochondria are not healthy, cancer risk goes up. Your you you age faster, you feel worse. So we got to make the mitochondria help, healthy. Creatine is part of that. It'll improve the health uh, of your mitochondria. So yeah, it's already and they're even starting to include it in uh, some of these formulas for geriatrics. So these like what are they called? The homes where they put. Um, uh, where retirement people, homes. yeah, like retirement homes, they are starting to use uh, creatine to improve function and health, like in muscle sparing or what? Muscle sparing, uh, cog cognitive cogn oh. cognition is the big one. Mm. Heart health is another big one. They're noticing that when people take creatine, um, that their 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 well, odds they, of having the intracellular fluid does that help too with like uh, joint pain? Like I would think a little Not, bit. No. That's a good question. Yeah. I haven't I haven't seen anything like that. Now the the dose is three to five grams, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, traditionally it's five grams, but I just read a study that showed that uh, people got great benefits from two grams, just taking two grams a day every single day. And they got, you know, really, really good. Now, most, benefits. most, all your supplements that, you know, be either powder form or pill or they, they are in five, five gram doses, yes. most mm -hmm. of them. So normally what I would tell clients is three to five. And I'd say like, you could do three if, if you're already like a, a heavy steak eater, right? You eat a lot of red meat or if you eat a lot of red meat, then you probably don't need five. Uh, otherwise you could probably take the serving size of five every day and you're fine. Yeah, there's that. And then there's the, how much muscle mass you carry. So the more, like if you're a, a very small petite person, um, then less creatine you would be fine. Oh, interesting. So I wonder what, so what about somebody who's like a massive bodybuilder? Then, 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 then they would need to take five or maybe even 10. Oh, okay. yeah. Because that's where you're storing uh, a lot of this is in the muscle. So this is why back in the day. So I wonder, do you have any idea what most of the studies are done on? Like what size? But, uh, um, no, all the studies will do five grams. No, 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 no. What like what type of person? Because if your studies are showing five grams, and they take an average person who's 180 pounds and only has 75 pounds of muscle on them, that'd be dramatically different than a guy who carried 200 pounds of muscle on his body when he's bodybuilding. Not specifically, but most studies are done on college-aged men. 
So that's usually what you see when you read studies. Those are the yeah. people that volunteer for studies. Or college age guys, they tend to be, <laughs> you need fifty they bucks. Better to do. <laughs> they need fifty yeah. bucks. <laughs> yeah, they're the same ones that are signing up for like you know like donating their body to science to get paid like a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Or, or getting injected with some weird thing. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're, exactly. They're, they're, they're cool risks, and yeah. they get fifty bucks. Right? Totally. So yeah. So but but the more recent studies showed two grams <laughs> with with everyday people, including athletes had uh, uh, great benefits. Mm. So I think five grams is fine. There's no, there's no, all the studies that have been done on creatine, actually not all of them, most of them were five grams. None of them showed like adverse effects or anything like that. So you're fine taking five, but I don't think most people even need five, especially if you're not like, you don't have like a ton of muscle. And like you said, if you eat a lot of food that, you know, that contains creatine. And it, what they used to say back in the day, and some companies still say this is, do a loading phase of 20 grams a day for like a week and then go to five grams. And what this does is it, it gets your your stored creatine levels, if you will, up faster. Because once you get up to a certain level, then what you're doing is just maintaining that. But to get it up faster, you could take more. I disagree with that. I don't think that's necessary. I think it's a waste yeah. of creatine. Plus it's harsh on your stomach. Yeah, I don't think yeah, that's- That whole loading phase thing. No, nah. yeah. I think I think two to five a day, that's it. And I don't even take it every day. I take five grams and I take it five days a week. Saturday and Sunday, I usually don't take it. 